The first guy I loved was a loser. The second guy was even worse. If there was a bomb within 50 miles, I was drawn to him like a curse. I followed on number three to L.A. He left me there on my own. So there I was, no friends, no money, too ashamed to go home. This is my life. Take a look at my When I met kids, she worked the street She made it sound so good So one day I did it I cried the whole time I was coming apart at the seams You know, it's not like anyone plans it No, it wasn't my childhood dream This is my life Take a look This is my life, the story of my life. Thank you. song by the way. This is my life, if you couldn't tell by the title. <laughs> what a strange night, and yet it feels right. How was I to know? She would show me who I could really be. Can't keep holding on I've got to let it go Was that freedom Freedom When we were dancing on the floor I felt freedom Sweet freedom Like I've never felt before and I know that I need more meeting big wheels making big deals is all I've ever known in the boardroom with a silver spoon I've got everything I need But somehow I'm still alone Give me freedom Freedom It can all be rearranged I need freedom Sweet freedom And I know might sound strange I believe that I can change and when I look into the future I can 
have a seat and I'd love to also invite up Paula Wagner the show's producer Yay. where's Paula excellent <laughs> so that was fantastic uh, brought back just this weekend I saw the show which was equally amazing and I thought maybe to kick us off what we could do just by way of introduction to this crowd is that each of you could just share a tiny bit about your background and really what attracted you to want to be part of this project well, uh, sitting next to these two people, how could I not? I get that. <laughs> I, I, I actually got involved earlier than they did, but I'd known Gary Marshall, who is the, the real spirit and inspiration, and who doesn't love this movie? It is yeah. really one of the great movies of all times. It's more watched and rewatched all over the world than almost any film. Everywhere in the world they know it. So it was exciting, and of course, working with Samantha and Andy is just a dream, uh -huh. really a dream, and our whole cast. And to be able to work with Brian Adams and Jim Valance and Jerry Mitchell, J.F. Lawton, our, our entire cast, Orfe, who's fantastic, what Eric team. Anderson, I could just go on and on. I, I have done just about everything you can do in this business. I started as an actress. I was one of those summer stock kids. I've done everything. I've hung lights. I've done props. I've done it all, and I was an agent in Hollywood, and I uh, had a production company. I've produced many, many movies, mo a lot of action films, and it what was time there, to... There's, there's a little one we should know about, right? It's just a little independent film, Mission little, Impossible films, yeah. I believe. Yeah. The first three, Mission just, One, Two, uh, the, the, origin, <laughs> the origin story, uh, really. but. There's something magical about musicals on Broadway, yeah. and it's my favorite thing, and I love every minute of it. And everything I've ever done has organically led to the next thing. So. Well, we're grateful it led to this. Andy? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, becoming involved with uh, Pretty Woman, uh, my story is basically starts at Broadway. Um, I wasn't involved in the out-of-town runs with Chicago and doing the workshops, but I had seen them all because my wife, Orfe, who was mentioned before, uh, plays Kit DeLuca in the show. So I was a fan of the show already, and certainly a fan of Samantha. I was like, star right here. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is great. Honey, have a great time doing the show. I'll see you, I'll see you uh, later. Um, and then the role of Edward Lewis opened up for Broadway. And uh, Jerry Mitchell, who I knew from doing Legally Blonde, uh, called me up. And, and he's like, would you like to do it? And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? This is, I, I wasn't sure, because I had to think about it for a second, because I was like, I, 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 I'm not sure. Should I be doing this? Is this the right role? Um, but then I realized, like, my wife's doing it. I, I know Jerry Mitchell very well. I know the show very well from seeing it. Uh, Samantha's a star. This is amazing. Um, and Gary Marshall and I had worked together where I played the Fonz in Happy Days the Musical at the Falcon Theater in his theater um, many years ago. And so I was friends already with the family. I was basically friends with everybody that was already part of the show. Um, and then, you know, 
a few hours later, I sang through the music just to see if I could. And uh, because it's Brian Adams and yeah. all respect to him, he's amazing <laughs> and can write incredible pop tunes, but also has a voice that like no man can actually it's higher sing. Than, higher than mine. It's higher than yours. So I was like, you, I don't think I can sing that high. Uh, but they lowered the keys for me. Uh, no, they, they, they uh, eight shows a week singing, singing these tunes, like, you know, it's got to be in the pocket. So, um, and then the role just sort of, I examined it and, Edward Lewis in the film does a lot of, a lot, Richard Gere does a lot of this, like takes to the camera, like. <laughs> so I'm like, what's behind all that? Where's all the internal monologue stuff? Where, wh what, who is this character? And then you realize how complex he is. And we talked about the dialogue and maybe adding a few lines here that really give hone in on this character and the songs open up a whole thing for the character. And then it was, I was fully in. I was like, oh wait, I have to do Edward Lewis. This, we this had to have him. Thank you. But, from um, the beginning, we were, from the beginning, but you were doing another show. Um, they, I'm glad I was in the mix. Um, so more than in the, you were, it was, uh, it was just it. great. It was great to uh, come on board and we've just been having a blast since. And uh, that's been my journey with Pretty Woman. And, and I feel like you do see a few of those looks in the show, like just like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Samantha, I would have paid for the smolder. the smolder. Yeah, I give you a few yes, smolders. That's the word. A few um, well, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not even from here. I'm from England, and um, and so yeah, d yeah. Did you? Did you? <laughs> no clue. Okay. Um, and for honestly, for me, the moment I I was flicking through and I, I saw Pretty Woman the musical, and the moment I saw that, I was like, well, that. I'm desperate to do that role. There wasn't even a question mark. It was just like that role. What a gift of a role. And, to, and, and I saw Jerry was directing it, who I'd always wanted to work with. Um, and I'd seen you know, all of his shows and been such a fan of his. So honestly, for, for me, I, I, the minute I got the music, I, it said Brian Adams. And I, I, I just received all the information. And I hadn't even read anything before. I was like, let me see the music. Let me see. And I was like, Brian Adams? That's a weird name <laughs> for a songwriter. If it's not Brian Adams, I was like, hang on, that you can't be called Brian Adams and be a songwriter. And I was like, cool, major. I was like, not Brian Adams. He was like, yes, did you not read the email? I was like, I was so excited. So yeah, so all the elements, just it was just a no-brainer. I was just like, get me into that room to audition. Because Samantha was a no-brainer for us. <laughs> I can tell you. Well, honestly, it's just been amazing. And, and it's been really, for me, I was thinking, my last birthday, around my last birthday was when I first started with the show. It was this time uh -huh. last year when we did the lab. So that was, you know, we, st we started to workshop. And then I went out of town uh, with it in Chicago and now to Broadway. And this is my Broadway debut. And it's just like, it's just been magic. I can't believe that I get to do it. I can't believe it. And we have so much fun. And that for us was like the minute we met, and we met just socially. Mm -hmm. we, I went to see him in Groundhog Day, and then he came to see the show. And it, it's, it is like a, an amazing family. And oh. just all the, all the elements, Paula is absolutely a hero. Like we just are so, so lucky to have her. And it's, it's an amazing group of people, and that makes it all just even more special. I mean, that's incredible. And what a transition from London no, to New York. Yeah, a bit of a jump. Uh, yeah, well, and, and with that, I guess I'm curious, right, because you've got this iconic story right, with all of the legends that surround that. Then you've got this incredible dream team yeah. surrounding the entire show and, and sitting here. And I guess just starting with you a little bit, like, what was it like to bring that to life? Like, were you anxious about expectations? Were you just, like, well, beyond with all the talent? Like, how, how did you experience it? I think... You know, with a project like this, it's so loved. This yeah. to, to start this movie is so loved. You know, the, these characters are so well loved, and Julia Roberts is so loved, and Richard Gere. Like, it's magic. They're all magic, and yeah. so I feel like I, I guess for me, starting starting it, I just I don't feel like you can walk in carrying all that yeah. and and being. Scared of all that and fearful. I was just excited about the challenge of getting to get stuck in and get to know this character and translate this character for a musical. Yeah. We get to sing songs by Brian Adams. <laughs> like that already is it, it means that you get to create something different. And it's just been it's been really fascinating trying to work these characters into a musical yeah. world and see how they communicate. Gary Marshall, from actually the moment the, the film came out saw this as a musical for Broadway. That was his yeah. dream. And we're very happy that his dream came true. 
But wow. he worked on it until he passed away. Um, we did the first act, actually. Orfe was with us. Mm -hmm. We worked on the first act, and then he passed away. But we carried on. And it was his dream. He what always vision. felt the musicality of the show. That's amazing. And with these people... Well, it's an incredible you know, vision, it's, and I was saying to them backstage that you know I wasn't sure what to expect, having loved the movie so much. You know, a take on that is always a challenge, um, but the freshness and like retaining everything that was important about the film, but also bringing a fresh take with all of this creativity was really incredible. And I'm curious, and maybe Paula, this is a question for you. Like, you know, the film came out in 1990. This is opening in 2018. It, how did you think about? sort of making it fresh and yet keeping the heart. Like, what, was there a strategy? Did it just happen? And it, it took a long time. And I have to credit uh, my creative team with Jerry Mitchell, J.F. Lawton, who wrote the original, original script. Obviously, Gary Marshall's spirit and vision it, it in, infuses, you know, every moment. Um, and... Brian Adams, of course, who brought who brought this incredible uh, sound and passion and depth, and it was the right thing at the right time. Brian Adams and Jim Valance. Jim is a very gifted songwriter, and the two people together. And you know, we work with our our, our musicians. Our you know Will Van Dyke, whom you saw up here, who's amazing. We just have this great team. Yeah, and. What it is is how do you you how do how do you translate as Andy said how do you translate a look to stage yeah. how do you translate passion to stage and it's the musicality of those moments and and when you have a superb cast as we do and they bring to life the the inner workings of that character and particularly in in the character of Vivian and Edward we. We, you stay true to what Pretty Woman, to the movie that everybody knows and loves and all those great moments, but you also bring something that has a contemporary feel. Yeah. You know, our, 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 our young woman is more independent. She, she, lives, she knows how to handle herself, but she's, she's searching for something. And, but she doesn't take any kind of... Uh, inappropriate behavior from anybody else and that's like different that. you know yeah, I, and yeah, she she maybe has made a mistake with what she's doing but she's going to figure it all out and that's her journey and mm -hmm. in the in the process she saves him guide i mean how much were you you know watching the movie over and over and studying it how much of it was trying to sort of just independently put yourself in today's version of that character the way paul was describing what was your process um it was interesting because I did go back and watch the film um, when I was being considered, um, and I wanted to see like wh what is the core? Where's the co where's it? Where's all the stuff land? And it lands in the chemistry between the two lead characters, like Richard Gere and Julie Roberts have this incredible chemistry, and you're just sucked in, and you you want to go along for the ride. Julie Roberts is just amazing, um, and so like when I saw Samantha do it, I was like she's She's got it. You're sucked in. I'm, I'm totally with her story. Samantha's handling this character amazingly. I'm like, let's. I was like, I, when I'm when I join, I want there to be like this immediate f friendship, interesting, romantic thing that needs to start weaving from the very get go of the show and end up with the audience just wanting them to be together yeah. so badly that it's. That, that there's such joy in it at yeah. the end, which and which I think we found. I feel I feel like we have because they're all applauding at the end when we kiss and and it was like you know when she rescues him right back is is just incredible and I, and I feel like we win that way. Um, that was like my main objective is just that make sure that the two of us on stage have this f find what it, the element is in saving each other and and becoming the evolved characters at the end. She finds strength. Edward finds he can let go of all of his, you know, chambers around his heart, let go of his father passing away. There's all the stuff that, you know, we don't hone in on in the, in the show. It's not like a depressing piece about my father dying or anything. Um, but it's, it's about being able to love um, 
even when you think you're at the top of your game. It's when you when you have all this stuff and you're looking around and you've got the silver spoon in your mouth, you've been given everything, every opportunity in the world, and what are you missing really is just the heart and the compassion. That was that was my journey and making sure that that, that worked. I love that. Samantha, would you add anything? Do you know what? For me, I did not watch the movie. So the minute I first f yeah found out that I was going to audition, I I didn't watch the movie, and I, I haven't watched it since before then. I don't know when the last time I it was I watched it. Probably not that long before that, because who hasn't watched Pretty Woman what, at least once a year, um, <laughs> every year of their life? But no, I, have, I haven't watched it um, because it's, you know, it's hard because they're, they're such sort of iconic performances and we have so many elements of the, sh of the, the movie in our show, which we want to make sure that we deliver that nostalgia for sure, but also, you know, telling our own version of this, of, of these characters. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, because it's, you know, it's, it, for me, I, I, it would be, it'd be hard to, to re-watch it now because you would, you sort of, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. Yeah, Still, totally. absolutely, um, with respect to the amazing performance that Julia Roberts gave, which is just so iconic, but also trying to, you know, do, do my own version. So yeah. for me, I haven't. I haven't watched okay. that. I dare to watch it. I, I totally get that. Well, and I heard that Julia Roberts actually came and watched you. So yes. how was that? Oh, yes. Whoa. I didn't know <laughs> she was watching. Yes. So I it was a tribute night to Gary Marshall. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, amazing. What an amazing night. And then at the end, um, there was a speech and... It was like, oh, Julia Roberts in the audience. I was like, what do you mean, <laughs> Julia Roberts in the audience? She came backstage, and I was like, oh, wow. And she just hugged me, and we just stayed oh. hugging. And I was like, this is just so amazing. And That's it was just, amazing. You know, it, it, was, it was so so special to have her in. And she was so lovely and encouraging and, and supportive oh. of, of what we were doing and and of me, which just made my heart burst. It was, like, it was, it, it was a, really a dream. And she is so she's so beautiful like <laughs> i don't even mean just to look at because she's stunning to look at but she's got this amazing almost like this light around her aura. and yeah. she just like her smile is oh i could go on for days but <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing moment oh it really was. god i can only imagine i wanted to turn back to you paula and say you know um it's a hot topic now women in hollywood etc cetera, etc cetera. how if at all did you feel like the leadership of this show was you know, did you experience it any differently as a woman? Did you think being a woman brought a different touch it, or not? Well, I have, <laughs> how do I say it, been in a leadership position for a long time yeah. Yeah. in my career. And I so I have looked at it as what are the skills of leadership and really working towards the qualities that a good leader should have, mm -hmm. which is compassion and understanding. And I guess I've done about every job you can do in, <laughs> in the theater <laughs> and film way. and television. So it's, it's understanding what everybody is doing yeah. and being collaborative and working with the very best people and supporting them and encouraging them to do their very w best work. And we have this great group of people. I mean, this, this sh and then of course there's Jerry Mitchell yeah. who has, who is so phenomenal and so exceptional as a director and brought his energy and passion and desire. And you know, the director really is the, the creative leader. They're the ones yeah. that take and put everything together. And so what I watch on stage is, is a beautiful collaboration. So it makes being the, the lead producer easy and fun. The best, the best part of a job. Mm. Well, and one other thing that's an interesting sort of commonality is there's actually a lot of married couples at Google. I don't know if that's a little known fact. Um, but I'm just curious, you know, you, you're in the show with your wife. Um, and you've worked with her before. You know, how, how does that translate in a theater environment? How does that work for you guys? Uh, we worked together on a couple different shows. Uh, one was a Jerry Mitchell show. We did Legally Blonde together where she played Paulette and I was Kyle, the UPS guy. We, we ended up being <laughs> on stage together. Um, that was kind of our first Broadway turn. Oh, no, it was our second. We had done Saturday Night Fever before that years ago. Um, and we've done since done concerts together and other Productions, so this is our third Broadway show, and actually, it's like just basically just based on scheduling alone. It's like that's the dream. It's like if you can work together, now we can both like walk the 
dogs at the same time and or feed them. And you know, somebody's got we can we can That's just kind of schedule our both. lives as opposed to I'm coming in for six hours, you're going out for six hours, I have to fly off here, you're flying off there. Um, so right now it's like a little, you know, wonderful thing <laughs> being being together just outside of the show. Inside of the show, we actually never see each other on stage ever except for the bows. Um, because she's just like on her own journey of her character and I'm on mine. So um it's just, but, but we're all just doing, I just have such respect for my wife's talent, and I've always had it. To have, I saw her on stage before I actually met her once. I was like, oh my god, uh, chick's amazing. And then I got to meet her and be in a show with her, and like, you know, we were dating like six weeks later. And I was like, I took advantage of the situation. So 18, 18 years later, uh, we're, we're still doing what we do, and always, uh, we're, we're very, um, I don't, I was, we're different performers and we're different people and full respect for that as well. So if we were, I guess, too identical, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it would, maybe we might rub each other the wrong way, I'm not <laughs> sure. But um, it's like, I just let her do her thing, which is amazing if you see the show. You're not going to Oh, if you yeah. haven't heard of Faith's voice, oh. it's like, I, 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 if I it's heard banana. that, I, I, would, I would be like, marry me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Like a voice that you've Easy. never heard anything like. It's like, okay. She's fantastic. The so. huge voice, and she's yeah. just, oh my gosh, amazing. Wow. Yeah, so I, I think love her that's character, it. Just too. Respect and also uh, good scheduling. So. <laughs> Practical and romantic. I like yeah. it. And it makes a, we have a great, pretty woman family. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Um, all right, let's go to the mics. Question for Andy. Um, so I loved seeing you, I'm a fan of yours, loved seeing you in uh, Legally Blonde, Rocky, Groundhog Day, haven't seen this yet. Question is, is there a particular reason you do so many shows that are based on movies? They just come around, man. They yeah. uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of them that come into town. Um, I, I think uh, it was really interesting because my first show that I ever did that was like that um, uh, was Saturday Night Fever, where I met my wife, which was like, and I went on as Tony Monero because I was like every almost every matinee I was going on as the lead, and it was my first going into a show that was based on a movie, based on a character, and kind of like went for. Would you watch the hair? You know, I work on the hair a long time, and you. Hit, and it was like I was sort of mimicking the style and the dance, and and sort of a uh, nostalgia pieces putting in. So there's a. I've I've kind of been skilled at it now. It's like finding the right amount of nostalgia in order to bring the audience in to know what they're watching, and then bring as much uh, honesty to the character as possible. I think there's something in in doing that many that I have uh, it, that I've kind of found the spot. It all depends also on the show. Um, <sighs> Groundhog Day, I thought was like it's. It found its own world, bananas like spinning stage world of trying to. It, it was it was a, it was like trying to find its own idea of a show, and so and it was terrific and and a, such an incredible journey of a character, and we ran for six months, so we closed. And I was like, I was, I was like, man. But, but you won the Olivier Award yes, in well, London. There's that. I one. have to say, um, and was nominated for a Tony. So you you. It's about kind of like where's where does where's the line of nostalgia and and then also bringing something joyous. It's catching the right amount of what the movie was, but then also bringing a joy you've never seen before. I think Pretty Woman balances that line so so well, and audiences are just coming in and going nuts for it. Um, but. Basically, there's just so many people want to make it's it, it, these good pieces that people want to make into musicals because you want to hear these people sing. I think, you know, Pretty Woman was one of those things like, that would make a great musical. <laughs> Legally Blonde was like, that would make a great. Like you, you think about it and and how how would it be? And then uh, you find people like me who are st stupid enough to do it. So. <laughs> um, no, but it's we're, we're the recipient of his. But it's 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 definitely genius. a fun. Uh, skill to find to know where the line lies and you know tiptoe around it and show the audience you can I, come on i'm about to say the line you know it's going to come here but i'm giving you something else um because you want to search for what makes it special 
you know, by the way, when you talk about the audience coming in and, and sort of being crazy for it, like, who are they? Like, are they early goers, nostalgic Gen Xers? Are they kids who are excited? Or is it everybody? Everybody. Yeah. Every people from all over the world, uh, young people, people who were young when the movie was on, who now are nostalgic, but really interesting young yeah. people 18, people yeah. 13 plus. I would say it really is that amazing array. Women, men, couples, they cut, they leave the theater kind of embracing uh, a group of women together. They'll come sometimes dressed in red dresses yeah. and come in. And it, it just, it's, there's something about it. I talked to, to uh, a group of women that had all come from Illinois, the heartland of Illinois. They come to the theater once a year and have a women's reunion. Oh. And this is the show they came to, and they just loved it. So you just got chills. OK, I think we have another question. Hey, guys, thanks for coming. Um, when I think of Broadway shows, there are a lot of names that kind of uh, come along with that. Brian Adams, until recently, was not one of them. <laughs> um, Paula, maybe you can talk to who had the idea to get Brian involved? How did that happen? And, and like, how you did know, you write great, the music? Great ideas come from many different places. Um, both of these phenomenal actors, there were so many different people who said, they have to do this, they have to do this. And Brian, it came, Brian had seen the show, knew the movie years ago, and he himself had wanted to do this for a long time, as did Jerry Mitchell want to do this for a long time. But somehow he knew someone who knew someone, and somebody called me, and said Brian Adams, mm -hmm. and it was like a light bulb went off. It was kind of like, yeah, Brian Adams, you got it. It sounds great. Jerry, you know, was like, absolutely. Our whole team, G Gary Marshall, J.F. Lawton, everybody was like, we, we have to do this. And, and, jo and Brian and Jim uh, Valance came in. They wrote two songs. One, um, I think both or one of them are still in the show. They were so good. They did they did it quickly, and it was like, yes. How could we? How could it be anybody else? Cool. Thank you. Very cool. All right. I'm going to give the audience one more chance to ask questions. But in the meantime, um, you know, one question I have for for each of you is, hopefully, this is going to be, and I'm sure it will be, sort of a long and amazing run. But the show also talks a lot about dreams and the importance of sort of always having a dream of sort of what you, where you're going and what are you doing. Beyond this project, what's what's like the dream project for each of you? Well, this is like a dream project for me. Re truly, I've always wanted to originate a Broadway show. That's always been um, a huge dream of mine. And, you know, I started doing musicals and went, did Les Mis the musical, and that's what brought me into film, did the Les Mis film, and then I was doing movies pretty much for the next few years. And, and But always in the back of my mind, I just thought, I really want to do... A, a, a proper run of a show and really yeah. get in early and create the character and and have that that creative process and tr truly this is um it has been a dream this this is was so, was was the the big one that i really ah. wanted to, to get to try and and do and i've loved it and so i don't know i don't know about the future i've never been very sure how, about how, the how, how, how do you think go. about the difference between theater and film and does that affect anything in terms of how you think about the future well no, I don't. Do you know what I love? I do love them both, and they've yeah. got such different. Um, they're such different disciplines. They really, mm. really are, and the pros and cons are are equal for both because there's so many pros. Yeah. But but the, but the, what I'd say that film is like a sprint, and theatre is like a marathon. Mm. And so with theatre, it's definitely different, and it's about sustaining high energy for a long yeah. period of time, eight shows a week. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Whereas a film can almost feel like for two or three months, you don't speak to anyone or see anyone <laughs> and you're just in the film, doing a film on location somewhere and it's almost like three months of your life, but then that's it. Yeah. So it's, I, I don't know, I, I love the, op I love having the opportunity to do both. I am, um, uh, yeah, I feel very lucky to, that I've got to do both um, and I'd love to continue. Well, it's I, think, I, think, I think we'll be excited for whatever you do. Thank you. Andy? Yeah, interesting roles. Um, uh, I had those dreams once of being on Broadway, and then it happened. <laughs> I was like, what's next? Uh, no. Uh, 
it's it all just comes down now to luckily I've I've had some opportunities to be in Broadway shows in in great roles and this included, and so when something comes around, it's either like that sounds really great. What are they going to do with it? Let me see. Open the pages, and then it's like if it looks really like there's a journey happening that could be really fun or something that I could bring to it. Man, that's that's the next thing to do. Um, that and like be a Marvel superhero. That's yeah. kind of where I'm. You I'm, are a superhero. That dream never dies for boys, yeah, huh? Never does. Never does. You know, always uh, returns. <laughs> you know, um, w that we're in an era right now. Two things interesting is that live entertainment is more popular than ever. The theater, the the Broadway revenues and attendance and uh, 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 the revenues are up 15 percent from last year. That's amazing. And, and what's fabulous, what's going on now is crossover. So actors like Andy and Samantha, Orfe and Eric, all of our fabulous actors can go from theater to film to television. And it's all okay. It, 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 didn't, it used to be much more segmented. Whereas an actor, you were either a film star or you were a television star, or you did Broadway. And you didn't really cross over with fluid fluidity. But now you can. And I think both of these two amazing talents will, you will see them on film, television. They'll do more Broadway. You know, there's a, there's a wonderful opportunity now, I think, for actors who have their talent, who sing, dance, act. I think that's phenomenal. Were there any um, like behind the scenes sneak peeks you can give us from this one in terms of, you know, anything funny that happened on set or you know your absolute favorite scene? You know, you actually do look nervous climbing that trellis. Like, is there anything we should know? <laughs> Just genius acting. Okay. <laughs> that good. There's there's stuff that live theater is wonderful because there's it's like little imperfections almost every show. There's always like. Like, oh, that's new. Oh, let's try that. <laughs> or like we bring things to scenes where we're like, oh, all right, she's going in today. Let's go. Let's yeah. you can adjust, um, which is part of the fun of doing live theater. Um, but there's certainly like I think someone belched right before we were about to kiss <laughs> at the most romantic possible point. And it was silent in the audience. And somebody was like, Burp. and we both like looked at each other's eyes. We're like, don't go. Don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. Let's just kiss. And we're laughing in each other's faces. And uh, so there's there, that happens every once in a while, um, you know. And, but that's part of that's part of the process of live theater. It's like either uh, totally avoid it, or even give like a little beat, like somebody, some uh, like uh, when she comes out in surprise, the red dress that's everywhere. Yeah. It's gorgeous and it's a gorgeous moment. It's lit very well, and the audience applauds. And it's like sometimes they're really like. They love it, and they're in it, and they let themselves go and just enjoy that the dress. And so I just like hold and just <laughs> like like yeah, watch people, please go, um, and you and you make it live. Well, what what you have a line that you don't you, you say you look lovely, and you could hear I was happened to be in the audience and everything was dead silent. Everybody was like, oh, some guy goes yeah, <laughs> and in the audience, and I'm like, anyway, that's amazing. Remember that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Well, listen, you know, I think, oh, we have another question. Drawing parallels and lessons a little bit to the business and what we do here at Google. Um, you know, Samantha, you mentioned sustained high energy and, you know, coming in day in, day out, eight, eight shows a week. Um, how do you, has there ever been a time when you come in and you're like, oh, I, I don't want to do this, I'm tired, and how do you, how do you get over that? And also maybe a little tips about... What parallel are you referring to? <laughs> We're doing some crazy things here, but um, and then maybe just a tip on how to how you deal with stage fright if you have them. Yeah. Well, do you know I think f when going into a a theatre contract f for me, you I know that I need to I need to get into that into that mindset, and so I'll start you know eating healthily and going to the gym and making sure my stamina levels are as high as they can possibly be and because it, it doesn't stop it's eight shows a week it never it, it never stops and so for me i find i have to make a lot of lifestyle adjustments when i'm going into into a contract so you know i don't in my in my spare time i'm 
it's so relaxing and I don't really go out and go out particularly drinking and things like that I don't you know, I don't do a lot of things um to try and give my body the best break that I possibly can um and so sometimes that means that you might not be able to you know go out for your, for drinks with your friends and a birthday thing and and hopefully your friends will you know my your friends understand that your schedule is so so busy and you try and make it up in other ways and not going to silly things like not going to a, a bar that has loud music because you can't use your voice so it's it's things that you never really think about until you go how can i give my body the best break so that tomorrow my voice is 100% or i have 100% energy but it's a it's a process you learn you go oh that didn't that didn't feel very good or some people like to go to the gym like you like to go to the gym you work out before a show and that gives your gives you energy and gives you it's a trial and error i think you know um, well, listen, thank you so much for being here. I think I really wasn't sure what I was going to think when I went to see the show, and I, I kind of knew I'd have to say something nice no matter what, right? Because, obviously. <laughs> but I, I, I honestly can say, <laughs> no, really, the, the way you articulate it is what I felt in the audience, right? That joy, that love, that hope, that uniqueness of the moment. Um, and so I just really want to thank you for, for putting it all together and, and for what you bring to the stage, because I think it creates an amazing moment that will last for me, and I, I know for all the other folks who see it too. Um, and if you're willing, and I sense that you are, <laughs> uh, we would love to have you close us out with one more live performance. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I dared to dream And then the dream came true And when it did I wasn't sure what to do When you find someone Or someone finds you Is then You'll see it's always love that shines through Cause I believed in you And you believed in me And, and it's a long way home I remember well the way it used to be And it's a long way Cause I believed in you I believed in you, you believed in you me believed in And me. it's a long way home And I remember I well remember The well way it used to be used to And be it's a long way home And I'm alone There's so much I And it's a
once I dared to dream. Thank you all very much.